So we're here today with the uh, SLC7 UV um, and we're going to give it a test drive just to see how it runs. Now I've already tried it and there seems to be quite a bit of noise on the picture. We have a test signal which is what you would expect. And obviously some uh, static as you would also expect. So what we're going to do is pop off the cover for the five millionth time and just give the video heads a quick clean to see if that's why we are having issues. Because we're getting sound which is good but we're getting no picture apart from a lot of noise which does seem to suggest that the video heads may be very clogged and given that I haven't actually cleaned the video heads yet that is a definite possibility so let's get this cover off With the cover off, we are presented with the video head, which you can see here. This is the video head drum, and I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, there you go. That's one of the video heads, and that's one of the other video heads. Now, Betamax is quite an interesting format. So, one of the things they do to allow you to have smaller cassettes like this is they don't have something called a guard band or guard track which is basically a track that's uh, present on I think VHS video recorders which sits between both uh, picture tracks so you'll have one picture track which is done by one video head and another picture track which is done by the other video head and there'll be a guard track in between both of those the way Betamax gets over this is one of these video heads has a colour frequency that is centred at 685 kHz and the other one is at 689. So because they're at two different frequencies, there's less chance of crosstalk between both the heads. I'm just going to give this whole drum and these two video heads clean, taking care not to break head itself because if I do that that really is not good and just go around the whole drum There we go, that's taken off a fair amount. Now, I always tend to use flat, uh, lint-free things for this sort of job. And this particular tool, which is actually for cleaning um, camera lenses, is really good for the job because it's flat and it doesn't have any kind of, um, uh, sort of lint that could come off of it or any sort of kind of surface-related stuff that can come off. Now, I don't like doing this, but this is a piece of tissue which I'm just lightly pressing against the drum and releasing when it comes to the head itself just to dry the drum out. There's actually nothing on there. Now, one thing I did notice was the machine is much happier lacing uh, the cassette as you can see this, that's in much better shape, that's freed off really well. The only thing it isn't so keen about doing is rewinding. Now I'm wondering if it's to do with these little pulleys uh, on these tyres, which it very likely is to be honest with you. So I think I am going to need to get a belt kit and some new tyres for these. 
Um, there aren't actually any belt kits available, so I'm going to have to measure up the belts which I took off the old machine and see if, uh, or the spares machine, and see if uh, I can get belts of the correct size. So let's put in this cassette. Actually, I'm going to leave this to dry for a little bit longer as I don't want to make the mistake that I always seem to make, which is to put a cassette into a machine well before it's actually had a chance to dry. The video had has a chance to dry off. So let's have a look at these tyres. They're actually quite clean, to be honest with you, so I don't think we have any problems there, and I do remember roughing them up with a bit of sandpaper. So either we need the belt which runs from the video head to the idler is slipping, or those tyres are past their best. So let's put this in and see what happens. Let's hit the wine. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, Problem there with that little tyre. Let's press play and see what we get. So it plays fine. So this is what we're getting at the moment. Oh, that's good. It's actually stopped. <laughs> Let's try. Seems to have stopped for some reason. And the video head is. Is that stuck? No, it's not stuck, it's just not spinning anymore. And that is strange. Let's reset it. Oh. Yes, I've made my stupid mistake again. So basically, because there was still some... Yeah, you can see it on there. Because there was still some head cleaning material on the tape. On the tape head. I rather stupidly put the tape in thinking I'd left it to dry for long enough, but uh, evidently not long enough. That is on me, unfortunately. Easy mistake to make, but one that I really should learn from because I've made that mistake so many times in the past. Yes, I keep making it. Not to worry. Let's... Just give that another little clean. And let's go and fetch another cassette. So I've returned with a number of cassettes. All of them claim to have wildlife films on them, so this will be interesting. So I've got one here, which looks like it's nicely rewound. So let's pop her in. Let her lace. Hit play. Oh, didn't like that very much. Head is still wet. So, alright, let's fast forward it a tiny bit so we can get to a point where we will hopefully have some pictures. Pictures. It sounds so simplistic. We can have some footage. Oh! The croquet lawn drowns in a sea of brambles. The gardener is gone. Finally, We've got something. Can you hear that? That noise 
Like pause it. Order is giving way to chaos. What is It may be tracking. So, oh, that's because I've got it on. Is it on slow motion? No, it's still. That's slow motion. That should be still, but for some reason it's. So if I put it on that slow motion, slowing down. There, there's a frame button, which if you press it, should advance the frame. So let's hit play again. It's the birth of something new. Uh, Welcome to this tracking control. So that's the tracking all the way over that way. Are a luxury still, but for frogs, and all the way. It's March. That the way. Males advertise their own vacant possession by voice. And after attracting a mate, you have to keep rival males at bay by even more croaks. You can hear it. I just mute the TV. I'm just wondering if it's lacking servo lock. If it is, that'll be the little tantalum capacitors that sit on the main board underneath the machine. And they're quite a common failing. So I will probably replace those as par for the course. So you can see it's still like that at the moment. But the life that can now hide amongst them. Wild X3 mode. That speeds it up three times. Unlike this machine's main competitor, the Ferguson 3V23. There's no clever um, bucket brigade circuitry that gives you sound. It's on the um, times two speed mode on the Ferguson. Uh, you actually get um, audio replay at twice the speed, which, from what I understand, is quite um, a feat of electronics for the time. Flip it. Play. Believed to be paradise regained. So there's no woe and flutter, the sound is the good. The garden looks much like any other, but it's spring blooms poking through the debris of winter. But even at the back, the spring bulbs are well able to make a show in the midst of neglect. But that's how they are in nature. They are woodland plants. Their flowering is timed to occur before the trees come to leaf, or the new blanket of undergrowth blocks the Let's light. Let's find another tape. So, so we've got another tape here. No problem. The exit of the lacking offer of this rose tree such neglect is even an advantage. Let's stop the tape. Eject. It's probably not going to eject properly. Leave the tape in the machine a little bit, so let's be careful removing that. Go. I need to sort those belts out. The tripod. Down a second, and let's carefully retract this tape back in. So spool up the tape, and we'll try this other one to see if we've got the same uh, effect with the recording. One thing which is good, it's displaying a picture, so that's half the battle. It's playing sound and it's displaying a picture, so that's really sort of half the battle, really. It's just uh, getting it sorted out so it displays a consistent picture. So we've got this Sony cassette here. 
So I think it's a Sony, which was their uh, strap line from uh, the 1980s. It's a Sony. You used to see a lot of um, Sony equipment with that uh, rather pleasant sort of logo on, which looked like um, uh, an audio waveform with little dots, and underneath it had written, it's a Sony. Sony were sort of very much the Apple of their day, because if you wanted something um, that was fashionable, you bought something that was by Sony be it a Walkman, television, or whatever. They really were pretty good in the 80s, to be honest with you. Well, in my opinion, anyway. What is the shot there? So, here we go. <sighs> Same problem. From local, looks like, HTV region. Oh, that's gone out of focus. Tonight on ITV, it's Robert Ed's wedding anniversary, and that's my boy. And there we go. So, let's stop that for a moment. Next steps. Ooh. Next steps for this machine is sort out what I think might be a servo lock issue. Uh, get a new selection of belts to try and sort out that um, belt issue. I think it might be the belt that runs from this to the idler under there, plus I need some new idler tyres, and um, well, try and sort out the channel display here. The actual channel display under here is not as I thought an LCD, uh, sorry it is an LCD, not a um, vacuum, blah, vacuum fluorescent display, which I thought it might be, so sort that out, and have a look at, to see if we can get this clock working. And that's it for today. Um, in my view, quite a positive update because the machine is now fully lacing. Uh, that control arm that was causing us problems before has, as you can see, gone in fully. So the tape is actually wrapped around the array's head. And uh, I think we're in a much better position than we were when we started with this machine. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and also consider subscribing for more upcoming fascinating hobbies. Thank you very much for watching.